It's been over a month since Avengers Endgame came out and it is still on my mind. This might not be on others' minds as much anymore, mostly because it's taken me so long to get this video filmed and posted. But there's just one continuity error that I've thought a lot about, especially upon the second viewing of Endgame. For those of you who haven't seen Endgame yet, be warned, there will be spoilers in this video, but also why it's taken you so long to watch it and why would you be watching this video anyway? But for those who have seen it or don't really care, let's get on with the video. the timeline of Endgame has been on my mind. There are just a couple of places where it doesn't quite match up, which bothers me because I'm pretty particular about consistency. But before we get into the explanation slash theories for the timeline in Endgame, let's start with what we know for sure about time travel in Endgame. We know that Banner explains time travel this way. He says, if you travel to the past, that past becomes your future, and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. Basically, going back in time won't cause the present to be altered, and won't cause any of the characters to disappear because they mess with their parents. Sorry, back to the future. Essentially, any changes they make in the past won't butterfly out or ripple out to affect the present that they came from or are going back to. Because of this, we can think of time travel in Endgame more as traveling between matching realities than traveling between times. We also learned a little bit about time travel from the Ancient One. She said the Infinity Stones create what you experience as a flow of time. Remove one of the stones and that flow splits. So we do know that if one of the Infinity Stones was removed from the past without being returned, that timeline would diverge to create a new reality. However, this does not necessarily imply that it's impossible for the timeline to split when all of the Infinity Stones remain in place. That would actually be a logical fallacy called denying the antecedent or an invoice error, which is when you assume that the invoice of a statement is true even though that's not necessarily the case. Here, the statement we have is if you remove one of the Infinity Stones, then the timeline will split. But that doesn't necessarily mean that if you don't remove one of the stones, then the timeline won't split. It would be true that returning the Infinity Stones to the exact time and place where they were taken would prevent the timeline from splitting for that reason, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it couldn't split for another reason. Upon my first viewing of Endgame, I definitely thought that it was the case that alternate realities could be created whether or not the Infinity Stones were missing. And I thought that the Ancient One was saying that her reality would essentially fall apart if one of the Infinity Stones was taken, which would obviously cause the timeline to diverge, but mainly it was thrusting it into a dark alternative reality where one of the elements of the universe doesn't work properly. She was talking about the Time Stone, so her main focus was on time. But anyway, my point here is that we don't actually know if removing Infinity Stones is the only way to create alternate realities from time travel. Now, that's everything that we know for sure about time travel in Endgame, so let's move on to a little speculation. Really, there's two different possibilities for how time travel works. And it kind of makes sense that there's two different possibilities, because actually the writers and the directors disagree on how it works. The question is, who actually knows what they're talking about more? The Russo brothers have directed four total MCU movies, and Marcus and McFeely have written six. So it looks like the writers have a little bit more experience when it comes to the MCU, but not by much, and actually a lot of people think that the director's explanation makes more sense. Although there's also an explanation that can make the writer's ideas make sense too. Now let's explain those two different possibilities. We'll start with the Russo's idea. This is actually what I saw a lot of fans explaining in their Endgame Time Travel Explained posts and videos from right after the movie came out. And that's probably because it has a much easier explanation, especially when it comes to Captain America returning to the main reality at the end after having lived his life with Peggy. This explanation goes along with the idea that alternate timelines can be created whether or not the Infinity Stones are missing. Honestly, this makes a lot of sense because if we compare what happens when they travel back in time to what we know from previous MCU movies, what happens 
changes even before any infinity stones are taken. So it would make sense that alternate realities are created just by them going back in time, just by them being there. Because they change just by being there, either slightly or dramatically, how different things occur. So in the end, there are four or five different realities that are created that are identical to the main reality up until the time-traveling Avengers arrive, at which point they diverge. In this school of thought, Captain America going back to live with Peggy would also create an alternate reality. That is the fifth one that I'm referring to, assuming he goes back to 1945, right after he goes into the ice, by using the pin particles that were meant for him to return to 2023. If this were true, though, Captain America wouldn't be able to just live up until 2023 to return to that moment with Bucky and Sam at the end of the movie. That's because he would be living in an alternate reality, and the 2023 from that reality would be different than the 2023 from the main reality. So Captain America would have had to return to the main reality by using extra pin particles that he would have either found or had already, or by using an unexplained alternate method for jumping between realities. The only problem here is if he had used pin particles in the same way, he should have shown up in the same exact spot at the same time where they were expecting him just as the old Steve Rogers. Since he didn't, he must have used another method, and we don't know if there is another way to jump between realities. That pretty much sums up how it would work if the directors were right. Then, there's also the writer's idea of how time travel works. According to them, alternate realities wouldn't be created unless one of the Infinity Stones was missing. The problem with this is just that it doesn't make as much sense. Are we really meant to believe that Loki getting away with the Tesseract won't create an alternate reality? I get that some of the time traveling doesn't really cause much of a difference and could have just been a part of the main reality all along. Maybe Tony always talked to his father in 1970, and maybe Rocket always borrowed the Aether from Jane, and maybe always Star Lord got knocked out before getting the Power Stone. But Loki getting away with the Tesseract and Thanos and all his armies disappearing, and Captain America going to live with Peggy, those would arguably create major differences. So does it make sense that returning the Infinity Stones, or not even taking them in the first place, would keep those differences from happening? Not really. So how is it possible to restore the original timeline by returning the Infinity Stones? My idea is that by returning the Infinity Stones, they're severing all ties that the main reality has to the ones that they travel to. That's why it's necessary for Captain America to return Mjolnir too. They need to return not only the Infinity Stones, but also anything they borrowed from those other realities. In the end, that was just the Infinity Stones and Mjolnir, because the only other things or people that came to the main reality, Thanos and his armies, were snapped away. Now, once those two realities aren't dependent on each other anymore, the one that was created from the time travel can just cease to exist. Although I guess thinking of it as ceasing to exist is kind of harsh. Maybe we can think of it as like rewriting everything in that alternate reality to match the main reality again. Essentially making them converge back into the main reality. That way, once Captain America returns everything to when and where they got them, all of the other potential alternate realities converge back into the main reality. Now, why does this work? In this theory, time travel isn't traveling between times, but creating a matching reality for the Avengers to borrow from. They use those realities to borrow the Infinity Stones and Mjolnir from, but once they return them, the main reality isn't dependent on that reality anymore, so essentially it doesn't matter anymore, and it can just be reverted back to its original form. Again, the only problem with this theory is Captain America coming back at the end. If traveling in time creates a potential alternate reality, how would he be able to get back to the main reality at the end? Well, according to the writers, Captain America was always the man who married Peggy in the main reality. That's why we never saw any pictures of her husband, or even heard his name in Winter Soldier. So that means that when Captain America traveled back to live with Peggy, he traveled to the past of the main reality, not a matching alternate reality. But 
how does that work? Well, when the Avengers are traveling in time, they create a potential alternate reality. Keyword, potential. It isn't an alternate reality yet. That reality has two possible outcomes. One, becoming an alternate reality because they steal an infinity stone or something else and never return it. Or two, converging back to the main timeline once they leave if they haven't stolen anything or if they return everything they've borrowed. But what happens if someone never steals anything and never leaves? This reality would be in that awkward stage of being a potential alternate reality the whole time. My theory is that when it's in that stage, it's not actually an alternate reality yet. And since the timeline where Captain America travels back to to live with Peggy is not an alternate reality yet, as long as Captain America doesn't cause anything to happen differently than he originally witnessed it, and as long as he doesn't steal anything and return back to the main reality, this potential alternate reality is also potentially the same reality. And when Captain America lives up to the point where he left in 2023, he closes a time loop and makes it so that the reality he traveled back to was actually the main reality all along. So that sums up my theory for what can actually make the writers right. But in the end, the question is who is right? The writers or the directors? I've spent so much time figuring this out, trying to make what the writers have been saying make sense, that I might be leaning toward that theory now. But a lot of people are siding with the directors because their explanations are simpler and just make more sense. I guess the only way that we'll actually know who's right is by watching more MCU movies and TV. If they do do anything about alternate realities being created by Endgame, then that would mean that the directors are right. Like, for instance, if the multiverse that's going to be mentioned in Spider-Man Far From Home, if that was created by the events of Endgame, then the directors would be right. But if it's something that's existed all along, then there's still potential for the writers to be right. But if they do anything about that alternate timeline everyone's talking about of Loki getting away with the Tesseract, then that would make it so the directors have to be right. I've heard a lot of rumors that that's what the Loki TV show on Disney Plus is going to be about, but I haven't actually seen the plot confirmed anywhere. Like, my husband said that he saw somewhere that it was confirmed that the Loki TV show was going to be about that, but I still haven't found anything that's actually said that that's true. Do any of you guys know? I really want that information because I just can't find it. So let me know in the comments down below what you've heard about that and cite your sources so I can read up on those too. The last thing regarding this is I just hope that in the end there's actually a consistent explanation that makes sense. Like, right now I'm just annoyed about the conflict between what the directors and what the writers have been saying, and I'm mostly just hoping that the writers are right, because otherwise all of the stuff that they've been revealing would just be inconsistent facts. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video about my two great theories for how time travel works in Endgame. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a like and comment down below what you think about time travel in Endgame. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos videos. Up here is my main review and reaction video from Endgame and down here is the rest of my Marvel videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!